Howdy and hello folks, my name is Christian Sasser, but you can call me MH4, and as all FNAF fans know, Springtrap had a little bit of a downgrade between FNAF 3 and Pizzeria Simulator. Scrap Trap, more like Crap Trap. <laughs> His design is off in so many ways, it just feels strange, but I'm not here to dissect why this is a bad redesign for an iconic villain. For that, you can watch the Oof Troop's great videos on the subject. I'm here to answer the important question. Why he look like that? Why in the canon of Five Nights at Freddy's does Springtrap change into Scraptrap? What logical explanation is there for such a dramatic physical alteration? Many will tell you that this is just the result of the FNAF 3 fire. At the end of Springtrap's debut game, the Fazbear Frights establishment is burned to the ground with Springtrap inside of it. However, as seen in this bright news clipping, as well as a secret cutscene in one of Sister Location's endings, Springtrap is alive and well, and noticeably well designed. So we can rule out the fire being the reason. YouTuber Hyperdroid believes that Scraptrap's appearance change is the result of a combination between remnant and illusion discs. If you aren't sure what that means, you can watch Hyperdroid's video for a fuller explanation. I think that's a fine enough idea, but to be frank with you, dear viewer, I'm getting sick and tired of remnant and illusion discs, so I'm choosing to completely disregard those elements of the FNAF canon in favor of something more interesting. I'm here to give you a brand spanking new take on the Springtrap to Scraptrap pipeline, one that answers all your questions, explains everything, and even answers all the questions you didn't even know you had. Let's begin. So our theory begins when Springtrap gets up in the sister location cutscene. Where does he go? What does he do? The answer I've concocted may shock you. He goes to Fortnite. Don't leave the video, don't leave the video, don't don't leave the video. I swear I can explain it and I swear it'll all make sense. With all the talk of the games being canon in universe but not canon in real life and X, Y, and Z characters coming back to life as robots, I, I promise you this is going to be the most normal FNAF theory you'll hear this year. So when Springtrap gets up, I think the first thing he sees is a Fortnite rift. I think there's one of two rifts he could have seen, either one that's completely random, similar to the one that brought Drift from our reality into Reality Zero, or a rift that was created specifically with the intention of bringing Springtrap to Reality Zero. While I think a random rift is probably more likely, it would make a much more interesting story to say that somebody deliberately brought Springtrap onto the island. It's likely that a deliberate arrival could be explained by I.O. testing. As shown in Batman Fortnite Zero Point, the Imagined Order has a bit of a bad habit of bringing unwilling test subjects onto the island to study their reactions and behaviors, with the two test subjects we see in that comic being Batman and Snake Eyes. However, I have a bit more of a fun proposition in mind. I'd like to submit that Agent Jones brought Springtrap onto the Fortnite Island as one of the Hunters back in Chapter 2 Season 5. While all of the Hunters brought were either explicit heroes like Master Chief or morally gray hired guns like the Mandalorian, we know that Jones did screw up at least a little bit when bringing Hunters in from other realities. When he brought Ellen Ripley to Reality Zero, he accidentally brought the Xenomorphs with him too. And when he brought Sarah Connor to Reality Zero, he may or may not have brought the T-800s as well. Additionally, Jones has been portrayed as bumbling and, pardon the pun, out of the loop on certain subjects despite his highly accredited history and incredible skill. This is especially seen in Chapter 3 of Fortnite in sources such as the Story Progression Missions or Fortnite Marvel Zero War. With this in mind, I think it's a reasonable assumption to say that Agent Jones could have thought Springtrap to be a different hunter than he actually was. As such, Jones could have made the mistake of bringing Springtrap to the island to so chaos and getting more than what he bargained for. All right, however, if you find that highly specific explanation a bit too outlandish, there is a precedent in Fortnite's story of villains being drawn to the island through random rifts. The entire premise of Chapter 2 Season 4 is that Galactus has arrived in Reality Zero in order to try and eat the Zero Point. And the explanation for Darth Vader's presence in Chapter 3 Season 3 is that a Sith holocron has slipped into Reality Zero and he is attempting to retrieve it. Perhaps Springtrap sensed great agony emanating from the rift before him, being drawn into it by the raw agony of all the loopers being forced to fight endlessly with no speech, memories, superpowers, etc. Under this theory, Springtrap could have been drawn to the rift simply by the promise of more victims. And we know that, canonically, he is susceptible to this. Part of the core gameplay loop of FNAF 3 involves you using an audio lore of a child's voice to draw him away from your office. So who's to say that he wouldn't do it again? Okay, regardless of how he got to the island, we have to run under the assumption that William Springtrap Afton 
did in fact arrive on the Fortnite island. I'm not gonna try and suss out exactly when in Fortnite's timeline that Springtrap arrived on the island, but I will confidently say that this happened in FNAF's timeline between Sister Location's cutscene and the events of Pizzeria Sim. Now to answer the question that's been on your mind for the entirety of this video, What does this have to do with Springtrap? I'll tell you, it's very simple really snapshots. Have you ever wondered why you're able to have a Fortnite party of four unique Gokus? Or why there's at least one billion alternatives of Jonesy, each with their own personalities, names, and traits? Snapshots are a phenomenon in Fortnite's lore that are created when a person leaves the loop. Simply put, you can never truly leave the loop. So upon your escape into the island, the loop creates a copy of exactly who or what you were the moment you escaped a snapshot of yourself. We see this happen before our eyes in the Batman Fortnite Zero Point story. Batman and Catwoman escape the loop and enter the island. The distinction between the loop and the island is that on the island, the storm is gone and you regain your ability to speak, but your memories and superpowers are still suppressed. And if you die, you don't come back because the loop is gone. Later in the story, they re-enter the loop for spoiler reasons, and they encounter snapshot versions of themselves. These being Armored Batman Zero and this unnamed variant of Catwoman wearing Lynx's helmet. Thanks to this book, we know that a person's entire appearance can change while within the loop. Not only do these two snapshots appear entirely different from the main Batman and Catwoman that we know, but we see earlier on in the story that Batman is leaving notes for himself in his armor, and those notes carry over into future loops. Additionally, thanks to certain alternate characters in-game, we know that snapshots can have entirely different qualities and body characteristics from the characters that they're based on. Dramatic examples include Toon Meowsles, who canonically became this way after eating a cartoon fish, Shadow Midas, who is the Midas character after dying and coming back for revenge, and literally almost every single outfit in the Lava, Slurp, Dark, Frozen, and Shadow series. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. I think it's plausible to assume that Springtrap won the Battle Royale and escaped the loop onto the island, leaving a snapshot of himself behind in the loop. This snapshot somehow became so proportionally misaligned and damaged that it became the scrap trap we know today. This snapshot spring trap, or snap trap as I propose we call him, also escaped the loop and eventually found his way to a rift that led him back to the mainline FNAF universe. While it's debatable whether or not snapshots can leave reality zero, I don't think there's any super strong evidence that says they can't. Thus, I ultimately propose that Scrap Trap is not the William Afton we know, but is rather an alternate version of him created and shaped by his time in the Fortnite loop. If you're still somehow not convinced that a Fortnite rift could bring a Scrap Trap, I have one last proposition for you the Omniverse. The Zero Point in Fortnite is literally the bridge between all of reality, and it's no stranger to bringing in multiple versions of the same character at once. Good examples include the simultaneous presence of Sapling and Adult Groot, the simultaneous presence of both Rick Sanchez and Pickle Rick, which yes, are both the same Rick C-137 as confirmed by their set description, the presence of both live action and comic book versions of Marvel and DC characters, the Uncharted characters having both their video game and movie appearances, alternate versions of celebrities that happen constantly, and so many, many more. Who's to say that Scrap Trap isn't just some alternate reality version of Springtrap that was carried by the Zero Point over into the FNAF reality. All right, now that we've established two possible reasons as to how Fortnite could have changed Springtrap's appearance, I think it's time to finish our hypothetical narrative from earlier. From the perspective of the mainline FNAF universe, Springtrap enters a rift at some point between the sister location cutscene and the events of Pizzeria Simulator and does not come back for an unspecified amount of time. At some point after he enters the rift and before Pizzeria Simulator, another rift opens and Scrap Trap emerges. Again, his reason for returning, or I guess in this case arriving, could be chalked up to a random rift, or it could be another deliberate choice, depending on how you wish to interpret it. If you believe he was an imagined order test subject, the IO simply could have been done testing on him and removed him from the island, grabbing the wrong Afton in the process. If you subscribe to the Agent Jones Hunter theory, you could say that Jones saw exactly what kind of hunter Springtrap truly was and decided to remove him from the island grabbing, again, the wrong Afton in the process. To close off this theory, there's one last little bit of post-Pizza Sim Afton that we have to explain, that being his personality. In the later FNAF games, William Afton becomes this unstoppable force of evil that truly refuses to die 
being reborn in both physical and digital manners. This, of course, is a far cry from what Afton used to be, simply just a, a mere zombified serial murderer in a spring-loaded fursuit. I think that both of the theories stated earlier can help explain this shift in personality. If Scraptrap is a snapshot, then his time in the loop made him more vicious and evil through both the psychological trauma and the honing of skills that can be derived from reliving an eternity of grueling battle. Once you make it onto the island after leaving the loop, the memories of every single loop that you experienced come rushing back to you all at once, as explicitly shown in Batman Fortnite Zero Point. Following this line of thinking, upon escaping the loop, Scraptrap remembered all of his loops, potentially even the memories from both his time as Springtrap and as Scraptrap. If he's from an alternate reality, then we can very easily just say that, oh, that William Afton from that reality is just that much more evil. If you really want to get spicy with it, we could say that he possessed more agony. The snapshot theory can even explain why both Springtrap and Scraptrap coexist in Ultimate Custom Night. Afton remembers both versions of himself because he's a snapshot of what the original Afton used to be, warped and tormented endlessly by the loop. Okay, okay. Now that all the information's on the table, let's regroup our thoughts. Springtrap is brought into the loop, either replaced by a warped clone of himself created by the loop or by an alternate reality version of himself, and that replacement is brought to the FNAF reality that we know. This is the foundation of my proposal. Ultimately, whether you believe this or not is completely up to you. In a sea of FNAF theories, this is just one of them. However, my greatest piece of evidence is what I'll use to close out this video. Thematically, it makes perfect sense for Springtrap to go to Fortnite. Because once he's entered the loop, he or a part of him can never leave it. This means that every time the loop resets, he always comes back. Fortnite Battle Pass. I just out my booted off my PC. Cause I need need to get that